Hi, this is Matt from Quan Asylum. Today I wanted to walk through a quick characterization of a 5 watt tube guitar amp found on Amazon for about $120. The diagram here shows how we're going to connect the QA401 to the amplifier. We'll connect the QA401 output, including the ground, to the front panel connector on the amp. And we'll connect the QA401 inputs differentially across the speaker. Note the measurement across the speaker doesn't use a ground. Instead, the measurement has a single point ground at the input of the amp. All right, now that we're set up, let's first make a noise measurement. I'll start with the tone knob centered, the volume knob at max, and the 5 watt button on the front panel selected. On the QA401, I turn off the generator, also select A weighting, and start running. Here we see the level of the 60 Hz, which looks fine. We can also read the noise in a 20 to 20 kHz bandwidth directly, and we see it's about 1.6 mV RMS. If we disable the attenuator, we can see the noise is unchanged. This indicates the noise floor of the amp is far above the noise floor of the analyzer, which is precisely what we want. Next, let's take a look at the frequency response of the amp. For this, I'll turn off A weighting, and I'll also move back to a smaller FFT size. Let's play around a bit with the amplitude to see what level we'd like to sweep. Here I see minus 70 dBV gives a signal far above the noise floor, and things appear unchanged whether the attenuator is on or off, so I'll leave the attenuator on. Next I select the frequency response plugin. Here I'd like to step from minus 70 to minus 40 dBV input level into the amp, and I'll do it at 3 points per octave. The purpose of this first group of sweeps is to ensure that the EQ in the amp isn't sensitive to input level. From this plot, it's clear the response is immune to input level. So now let's see what the sweep looks like with the tone knob at different positions. Let's plot again, but this time we'll build an overlay of the tone knob at the fully counterclockwise position, midpoint, and fully clockwise. First, fully counterclockwise. Now at midpoint. Now fully clockwise. The final plot shows us precisely what the tone knob does on this amp. At 1 kHz we can see we have about 54 dB of gain when fully clockwise and about 42 dB of gain when fully counterclockwise. To measure power output, I'll first return the tone knob to the center position and ensure the volume is at max. For these next tests, since they operated a single frequency, I'm going to move to a smaller FFT. With minus 100 dBV input and 2K FFT, I can still easily resolve the output at 1 kHz. So minus 100 dBV is a good starting point for a power sweep. But where we end the power sweep is a bit trickier. We don't want to start a test that could damage the amp. So we'll first sneak up on the max output manually and try minus 40 dBV to determine what might be sane. I can execute a single cycle of tests by pressing the control space key. That will run a single 2K FFT. At minus 40 everything looks and sounds fine and I can read that that's about 700 milliwatts. Next I bump up to minus 30 and do it again. Here the output is 3.9 watts which is approaching the limit for the amp. The THD is also degraded severely to almost 20% and I can see what appears to be Powerline IMD products appearing on the 1 kHz tone. So we know that at minus 30 dBV input, the amp is struggling. I'll back off 5 dB from that and use minus 35 dBV as the max for our test. So in this test, we're going to sweep from minus 100 to minus 35 dBV and measure the power at each point. And from that, we get the following plot. We can see the amp is cleanest at about 5 milliwatts of output with the THD at minus 45 dB and the peak power of 2 watts yields about minus 22 dB or almost 10% of distortion. That's it for now. In just a few minutes we were able to quickly characterize the performance of guitar amplifier. In an upcoming video we'll look at automating these measurements so that the amp can be fully tested in just a few seconds. Thanks for watching.